All right, so normally I would advise to not get a snake from Petco, but they've had this snake in there for a while. I think they're kind of just trying to get rid of it. So they give me a really good deal on it. So I'm gonna take it. It is a Mexican black king snake. I've been wanting one for a while, but I've kind of told myself I'm gonna hold off on buying any more snakes until I find a really good deal or get a little bit more room. So today I'm basically going to be showing you what you need to do whenever you first get a pet snake and how to set up its enclosure. So if it's your first time buying a snake and you're not sure what to do, I would definitely recommend finding a local breeder or finding a breeder on Morph Market that could ship you the animal. There have been times when people have complained about getting animals from bigger stores like this or PetSmart and they have had mites on the snake, which is obviously a huge problem. And the animals are just passed around a little bit more until they get to their final owner or what will hopefully be their final owner. So it's just better to find a local breeder or a breeder online. That way you know the animals are coming straight from the breeder. They're not being passed around very much and typically you're not going to have mites or anything with snakes straight from a breeder. When you get a snake at a place like this, it'll come in a box similar to this. It's not a super big box and it's not real well insulated or anything like that. So definitely not the most fun thing for the actual animal. So you won't want to do a whole lot of messing around. I mean, they'll be fine, but you just want to get them into his enclosure as soon as possible. So one other thing I want to mention real quick is before you actually get your snake, ask the breeder or ask the employees at the pet store or wherever you're getting your snake from a lot of questions. So ask them if they're feeding the snake frozen thawed rodents or live rodents. Because if they're feeding the snake live rodents, it might be difficult to switch it to frozen thawed and there's really not a benefit of feeding live. So I would always recommend frozen thawed. Especially if you're picking your snake up from one of these bigger chain pet stores, you might look at it before you actually leave the pet store and make sure the snake doesn't have any mites or anything. You wanna ask when the last time was when the snake ate, um, its habits, if it's eating well, or if they are feeding it a certain way, and just any questions that you could possibly think of. This will help you and the snake in the long run. There's a frilled lizard. So, I'm gonna shut up and stop talking so I can get this snake in its actual enclosure. And then once I get it set up, I'll kind of go through that part of the process and how to set everything up. So now it's time to introduce the snake to the enclosure. Now I may add some stuff or take some stuff out, depending on how the snake reacts to it. It's got at least a couple of things to climb around on. So now I will give you a quick rundown of my tank setup. So whenever you get a baby snake like this, you want to put it in at least a 20 gallon enclosure most of the time. They could do well in a 10 gallon enclosure as well, but normally a 10 to 20 gallon tank will be okay for the snake to live in for its first year or two of life. I personally keep my baby snakes in either a 10 or 20 gallon tank until they're about one or two years old, and then I bump them up to a 40 gallon, but this all depends on the species and the individual. Some snakes like to use every inch of the enclosure that they possibly can, and some snakes barely ever move. My sand boa, for example, is in a 20 gallon enclosure and does just fine because it just pretty much stays hidden most of the time. Now they will come out and they will use their space during the night, so I made sure I bumped my king and sand boa up to a 20 gallon enclosure, but like I said, it just depends on the species. So with a species like the one I have, which is a king snake, I normally would put them in a 40 gallon as an adult. People will argue that you could keep king snakes in a 20 gallon. Some species of king snakes don't get that big, and like I said, it depends on the actual species. So research the species that you're wanting to get and make sure you have the proper size enclosure. Now I'll wait and see how big it gets. It'll definitely go in at least a 40 gallon whenever it's an adult. I usually make sure that the length of my enclosure that I'm keeping the snake in is at least the length of the snake. I like the aquarium style enclosure, but some people would prefer the front opening enclosures, which I completely understand. 
I put a daytime heat light on one side. I'm gonna keep this light at about 85 degrees. You can check your light with a temperature gun. You can get them for about $20 at Walmart and I highly recommend those. So for this particular species, and like I said, you wanna do your research and make sure you're caring for the specific species that you wanna get. But for this king snake, I'm gonna keep the warm side at around 85 degrees and then the cool side about room temperature. So about 70-ish or 75 and then around 85 on here. You just wanna make sure you have a heat gradient. So right now I'm using overhead heat, but I'm also gonna set up a heat mat that I have hooked up with a thermostat. And with that thermostat, a probe will come off of it and you can either stick the probe between the heat mat and the bottom of the tank, or you can stick the probe inside the enclosure, tape it down real good or put some silicone on it. Just make sure it's where the heat's gonna be. You can use a daytime heat lamp like I'm using right now, or you can use just a heat emitter. A lot of people recommend just using the heat emitter. That's what I do with most of my enclosures. This is just what I'm doing temporarily for this snake to see how he reacts to it. So you can get these heat emitters on Amazon for a lot cheaper than you would find them in a pet store. I haven't had issues with any of the ones that I've gotten off Amazon so far. You can use just the overhead heating if you want. It kind of depends on the individual. If you have a snake that's out and about a lot, you might want to use overhead heating. If you have a snake that hides a lot and it's under the substrate, then you want to make sure it has the option to stay warm under the substrate. So you'd want to set up a heat mat on one side of the enclosure with the probe attached to it. Put your heat mat below the tank, never put it inside the actual enclosure. So to make sure there's some airflow between your heat mat and the stand that your tank is setting on, I like to put some of these wobble wedges on each corner. I just stack two of them on each corner and that gives a little bit of space between the actual enclosure and the stand so that heat mat has a little bit of air. So you can either use just a heat mat, like I said, if your snake is always hiding. I personally like to give my snakes both the option of overhead heating and a heat mat. So I will have a heat mat hooked up on one side of my tank with overhead heating as well and then nothing on the other side. You also want to make sure you have a hiding spot for your snake on both the warm side of the enclosure and the cool side. I have a little half log here and then I have this cave on the warm side. I usually like to put something in between too, so I put a little log back there with a ladder for it to climb on. And I've noticed with some of my water dishes, it kind of depends on the material, but if you put them below your overhead heating, they might evaporate a little faster, so I try to keep my water dish on the cool side. You can use a couple different kinds of water if you want. You can either put just bottled water in the enclosure, or you can put some tap water in the enclosure. If you do use tap water, you want to make sure to use some kind of tap water conditioner so it's safe for the snake to drink. If not, you can just use bottled water and it should be fine. When it comes to the actual water dish that you use, you just want to use something that is big enough for your snake to completely curl up in. You want to check this about every day and make sure that your snake doesn't poop or pee in it or anything like that because you would want to change that immediately. Typically, if the water stays clean for the most part, I change it at least once a week, but it might need it more depending on how nasty your snake might get it. The snake might drag some aspen and some other things into the water, and you might have to clean it more than once a week. You can put a background on your enclosure to make the snake feel a little more safe. If you don't think that's an issue, it's fine. You don't have to have a background on it. I just keep one on this one. When it comes to actual lighting, you don't have to have a heat lamp like this. Like I said, you can use a heat emitter. But if you use just a heat emitter, you want to make sure you have some kind of daylight coming in so the snake has a good day-night cycle. When it comes to your substrate, with certain colubrids like this king snake that I have, I really enjoy using aspen. They can burrow in it, it's easy to clean, and overall it's just a great substrate. So with a little baby like this, one to two inches is plenty. When they get older, you might want to put more in the enclosure, but this is plenty for it to dig down and feel safe. If you do use a heat lamp like this one I have, you just want to make sure you have it on for 12 hours a day and then no lighting on during the night. A lot of people sell those red or blue lights that you can use during the nighttime, but I don't recommend those. There are a lot of arguments online about whether or not you can put a snake in an enclosure that's too big. Now, I personally don't believe that to be true. You just want to make sure if you get a bigger enclosure to put your baby snake in, it has plenty of enrichment, plenty of places to hide, and it feels safe and secure. Like I said, I usually try to keep my babies in a 10 or 20 gallon for their first year or two, and then after that, I pretty quickly move them up to at least a 40 gallon or equivalent size enclosure, and maybe even bigger, like a 60 or 75, depending on the species. 
For the humidity in your setup, you want to make sure you keep it around 40 to 60 percent. That usually works fine. You don't want to get it too low, but you also don't want to get it soaking wet in the enclosure. Most of the time for these colubrids, like the Mexican black king snake, you really won't have to worry about it a whole lot, especially if you live somewhere like I do in Kansas. You can get the digital humidity gauges online. This kind really isn't accurate most of the time, so I don't recommend getting these, but there are plenty on Amazon available for a pretty low price. Now, if the snake you're picking up is a baby, you want to feed it around every five to seven days. Do that for the first year or so, and then you can start feeding it every seven to ten days. And then once it's a full-grown adult, every 14 days is fine. I personally start my baby snakes on a pinkies and then move them up to a fuzzy mouse, and then a hopper, and then a large adult mouse. You just want to make sure, like I mentioned earlier in the video, that you're feeding frozen thawed rodents and not live rodents. You can keep frozen thawed rodents in your freezer, or if you want to keep them in a separate freezer, of course, that's fine if you're kind of grossed out by it. You usually want to cool them down by either putting them in the fridge the day before you're going to feed your animal, or you can put it in some cold water in the sink, and once it thaws out, you can warm it up in some warm water, dry it off, and then feed it to your animal. Certain species of snakes are definitely known to be escape artists. So if you have a top screen type of enclosure like this, just an aquarium style, uh, you'll definitely want to get some of these clips to put on the edge. I only have two right now. I'm about to go get more, but you want to make sure this screen is secure because if there's a way they can get out, they definitely will. I think it's important to talk directly to people who have owned these individual animals before because you can find a lot of information online that just isn't correct. Do plenty of research, research online, watch videos. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this helped. Like always, do as much research as you can until you feel 100% confident that you can take care of these animals for a long time. Some of these snakes will live 15, 20, or maybe even 30 years. So you want to make sure you're capable of taking care of that animal.